Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this new opportunity for Bible study. We're going to be doing it recorded so you can watch it whenever you have time. And we're going to see how that goes. The book that we're going to be working through is clearly the Bible, but as a companion, we're going to use this book. And it's called Joining Jesus on His Mission, How to Be an Everyday Missionary. This book is by Greg uh, Finke, who I've met a few times at different gatherings uh, that I've been to. And I've had this book for a few years. It's been out for a couple of years. But I'm just you know, now getting into it because this is a wonderful resource for us in the midst of the COVID-19 stuff, how to figure out what being a church looks like in a time where we can't meet like we once did. And so we're going to be working through this together, and I'm going to be sharing it with you. If you have questions, uh, feel free to email me, Pastor Justin at stjohnsandwecare.org, and I'll, I'll love to be able to engage with you in that way. But for now, let's get started. We're going to start with prayer. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to meet together in this way. That even though we can't be together in one place learning about your word, you have given us the technology and ability to be in other places. That we can study your word there, that we can learn more about your love for us, the, the work that your son has done for us. You know, in our, in our pajamas, in our, on our couches, wherever we happen to be, Lord God, we thank you for that opportunity. And so we ask that you would be with us today as we learn uh, what it means to join you on the mission that you have to, to save all nations and pray that you would give us the, the wisdom, the insight, and the strength to, to do that, to, to be an everyday missionary. So Lord God, we lift up all of this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. And so talking about this, joining Jesus on his, his mission, we're talking about this idea of what it means to be an everyday mission or everyday missionary. But joining Jesus on his mission, you know, what, what, what is that? What does it mean? And why do I need to be a part of it? And those are questions that we need to address straight off the bat. The what is this? What is Jesus's mission? And you see that so clearly in the Bible in Matthew 28, verse 19. Jesus tells his disciples to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is the mission. That's what God is doing. That's what God is doing here now in the world, and that's what he wants us to be a part of. He wants us to be a part of that mission of going and telling other people about Jesus, his Son, and it, it's a big job. You can clearly see how much and how long that would take. That's why... It's a big, it's the mission. That's the goal for everything. And now you might be thinking, well, why is that the mission? Why do we go and make disciples? Well, for some of it, it's the reality we live in. You know, post middle of COVID-19, we can't do things the way we did it. We're here in the church for, for pastor and I and those who work here. But for others, they can't gather here yet in the Bible studies and the different things. We can't have things the way we did. You know, we can't have the VBS the way we did it, where we bring tons of children and families here to celebrate Christ's love for them. It's not possible now. And so we need to find a way to do the mission in a different way. And honestly, it's also kind of back to this same idea of, of the cultural reality. You know, people just aren't coming to churches like they once did. This isn't the glory days of the church where you held a service and people came to it. That's not the reality. But at the same time, we have to weigh that with the reality of how can people know about Christ if they haven't heard? If no one has told them. And so we are doing these different things, trying these new ways to find ways to fulfill that mission, to go and make disciples, in the opportunities we have. And it looks a little different. You know, you might be used to the way things were coming to church and everything was happening in this building. And the hope is that we will get to be able to do those things still. But one of the ways that Greg talks about it in the book is he said, you know, if you go into this idea, go into this mission with this old mindset and these old practices, you're gonna get old results. And I don't know if you've seen it or you've experienced it, but those old results show the church in decline. They show people walking away from the faith, and that's not what we want. And so like with Greg, we say we, we're going to go into it with a new mindset, do some new practices, and hopefully see some new results, some better results. 
And as we think about this mission, as we you know think about what it is and why we're doing it, I want to talk about a question with you, a question that Greg poses in his book, and he says, how is Jesus messing with you? Now, I don't mean messing with you as in, you know, he's like poking you or he's being mean to you or he's sending you very difficult things. That, that, that's not the kind of messing with I'm talking about. When I say, how is Jesus messing with you? I am saying, how is he working in your life right now? And you might be thinking, okay, I, I understand that part, but I, I'm not quite there. Can you give me an example? And I would love to give you an example because this is is a personal example for me for how Jesus was messing with me at a time that I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. So when I was in college, I was studying to be a youth director, a youth pastor, not the pastor yet, that came later, but I was gonna go and help youth kids. I was gonna be a youth director, we're gonna do lock-ins and all that stuff. And this was the winter of, well, the, the first half of 2007. I was getting ready to graduate and I was looking, you know, ahead to thinking I was just going to go and be a youth director. And then one of my friends at the time, he told me that he, after college, was going to go and be a missionary in Japan. He was going to work there and tell people about Jesus. And I was like, that's a really cool thing to do. That's a great idea. You know, you, you would be wonderful at it. Go ahead and, and, and bless those people. And during that time, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm going to go do my thing. I'm going to go work at a church, and that's going to be what I do. But throughout the closing months of my time in college, God was messing with me. He kept poking me, putting this idea that Japan would be a wonderful opportunity, that, you know, you, you should go. You be a missionary, you get to see a country you've never been before, the, the culture and, and the, the country over there. It's, it's a beautiful place to be. Some wonderful things, you know, over there. And he kept putting that before me. Well, by the time I had graduated in that winter, I had decided I was going. I was going to be a missionary in Japan. And that friend who, who came up to me initially and told me about this opportunity, well, he didn't even go. But his idea, his, his thoughts of being a missionary planted that seed in me, allowed Jesus to work in me so that I could go and be a missionary in Japan. And that time in Japan was some of the best of my life. I mean, lots of, I, I got to go to a new country, share the love of Christ with people, and and it's something that I always remember fondly. And I mean, heck, I, I met my wife in Japan, and she was a missionary there too. And it changed the course of my entire life to serve as a missionary in that place, going on, this adventure, which I, I didn't know was going to happen. I didn't know what it would be like. I didn't know if I would enjoy it. But it was Jesus messing with me, messing in my life, not to, to bring something destructive, but to bring something wonderful and beautiful. And that's the question I have for you. How is Jesus messing with you? Because you see, when Jesus messes with you, it's an adventure. It's not something boring where you're sitting on the couch and Jesus is going to be like, hey, that's a good idea. Just you watch TV. That'll be fine. But it's Jesus working in your life to do something new. And so as we're talking about this, this whole idea of, of missional living, of, of the mission of Jesus, we've talked about what it is. You know, we've talked about kind of why we need to do it. But now the most daunting question for most of us is, okay, how do I do it? How do I be this missionary? And, and some of it comes through a concept that Greg talks about in his book called missional living. This missional living is, is this living your daily life, but with an intent to share Christ. The intent to tell those people you meet or that you work with or that you know about the love of God. And, and it, it's called missional living because it's living life the normal way on mission and and it's done very intentionally the the scripture reference that he uses to kind of talk about this how this is is a biblical thing even from christ is he goes to john 1 4 and he uses the message translation to kind of talk about this but the message uses john 1 14 and says the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood you know, the NIV and the ESV, they kind of do a similar thing, but they say the word became flesh 
and dwelt or made his dwelling among us. Both of these scriptures, they kind of capture this idea of this, this, this neighborhood, right? This place that we go and we live and, and we do our, our normal things, you know, but we think of neighborhoods, we think of, oh, you know, the, the place where my house is. You know, that place where, okay, there's a neighbor over there across the street behind me, maybe down the road a little bit. Those are my neighbors. But here, they're talking about a neighborhood in a little bit more close, let's say, close-knit idea. It's talking about the neighborhoods are these network of people which we have regular access with. It's the people we see day in and day out. It's the people we talk to, the people we know. Those are the people who are in these neighborhoods. Because the idea of neighborhood, it's not just a location, right? It's not just, okay, you know, my house, their house, down the road, whatever. The idea of a neighborhood and the thing that is really appealing about neighborhoods to most people is the idea of relationships, you know, it's these relationships or the, the potential, the opportunity for relationships with people that make neighborhoods appealing. You know, it's, it's, it would be very different for people to move into a neighborhood where, where everyone shuts themselves inside and everyone doesn't talk to one another. And we've seen that over the past couple of weeks, couple of months, how people are restless. They don't like being shut in. They don't like not being able to talk to other people or see other people. They need those relationships. And that's what we're talking about here is those relationships that we have, that we are engaged in as the neighborhood, the place where we move into, the place where Christ moved into. And it talks about that more so in, in biblically, at least, with Christ, when he moved into the neighborhood, he took on human flesh. He's the God who came down into humanity and lived and worked and served people here. Not you know, just from a distance, not the God who, who stays up in heaven and just it kind of watches the people down there, but Christ came and lived among us, experienced what we experienced, suffered the way we do, and did it for our sake. And that's what we do when we do missional living. We do it for the sake of other people because believe it or not, whether you've seen it or not, Jesus is in those neighborhoods, in those relationships that you already have. And you might be thinking, well, you know, lots of people I go to work with or I talk to, they, they're nice and kind, but they don't go to church. They don't believe in, in Jesus. And, you know, I get it, but that's a part of what makes these neighborhoods so important because it goes back to the, the verse from John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world talking about the whole world, all people, whether they believe in him or not, those are the people that God loves and those are the people that God wants to know about him. In 1 Timothy 2.4, it says that same thing, it wants, talking about how it wants God wants all people to be saved, to be saved from the sin that, that makes everything in this world terrible. And, you know, you might be like, okay, well, that's fine, but I... I what about the church people? You know, we talk to the church people. Those are important people that need to be, to be shared Christ with too. And, and it's true. Those are important. But this is not just a, you know, in the church or in one place kind of mission. This is a, a cross the world kind of mission. And God talks about that when he's talking about Jesus in Isaiah chapter 49. In verse 6, he's describing uh, Jesus' work in the world. And God said, it's too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back there those of Israel that I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is a, this is a wide scope. This is a, a worldwide mission opportunity for us to to engage in that mission and when we think about that we think about worldwide we think about all of these other nations all the other peoples whose languages i don't know whose experiences i don't have it, it, it can be kind of scary i think this is a scary thing and and i'd say yes maybe but 
there's an upside. There's a, a blessing in this idea of joining Jesus on his mission. Because you see, when we talk about joining Jesus on his mission, it's joining Jesus on a mission he's already on. This isn't Jesus sending you out to do work for him by yourself, separate from what he is already doing. This is joining Jesus on the mission and the work that he's already doing. If you want to talk about it like grammatically, this is not doing things for Jesus, but doing things with Jesus. And that's idea, that comfort, that you're not going alone. You know, even if you're going anywhere, maybe you're just being at home, maybe you're going to work, and that's it. That's the mission that Christ has for you. Because one of the things that you probably don't think about very often is that Jesus is already working. Jesus is already working in your life, in the lives of the people around you, in the lives of those people who are, are antagonistic and angry and defensive about faith, about Christ, about church in general. They don't want to go to church. They don't like it. But Christ is working in their life. Christ is already moving and he's bringing you to be a part of that work. And so those are the, the important things that we talk about with this. But one of the other things is, is you know, well, why, why do you need me? Why is it important for me to do this? Why can't, you know, you, you are the pastor, you know, Pastor Fritch, and, and there are others, Dave, who work at the church. Why aren't you guys doing, you know, why can't you guys handle it? And, and I say, we, we're doing our part, believe me. But let me share with you one of the other pictures that... Uh, Greg Finke uses in his book to talk about this. And he used this, this idea of this river. And there is a river in Honduras. And it, you know, it's got a, this river that crosses, it goes across, and there's a bridge built across it so that people can go over the river in order to get to the places that they need to go. Well, at some point, and I don't know the exact dates, and I can't pronounce the name of the river, so I'm not going to share that with you. But at some point there was a, a large hurricane called Hurricane Mitch that came through Honduras and, and, and just dumped rain and rain and tons of water on the area. And if you look at it now, you'll see that in, in, the, in a picture or an aerial view, you can still see the river, but the bridge is no longer over the river. You see, the, the hurricane and the rain and the winds have made the river move. The bridge that was there to cross over from one side to the other is useless now because how the river has moved. And that is the same for the people in our world today. The people have moved. You know, church, the experience for church is not the same. You can't just host something in your building, hold a service and have people come into it and enjoy it. And, and that's all you got to do. That's not where the people are now. You, you know, people aren't coming to church. They're not coming just off the street and saying, oh, this church is holding a service. Let's go see what it's about. That's not how people view church anymore. More often than not, people think church is a place of judgment and, and hypocrisy. They think it's this place that is out of touch with the times and doesn't know what's going on in the world anymore. And, and you all know it just like I do. That's not the case. You know, we're here wanting to serve these people. And what Greg said in his book that I really, really like talking about the people who, who kind of are in that group that don't care about Christianity, they don't like it. They say, he says that they're not interested in our churchianity. But somehow they are strangely ready for biblical Christianity. That idea of the disciples and the apostles meeting together, doing things together. They would come together, they would share food, share their possessions, share everything they had with one another, and then go out and share the message of Christ with the people who needed to hear it. See, this wasn't just, you know, something that the disciples did because it was safe. Yes, at a time, that was part of it. They, they secluded themselves together out of safety because that's what Christ told them. He told them to wait. And, and we saw that last week talking about Pentecost, that... You know, that waiting was waiting for that helper to come and be with them. To, to give them the support and the strength and the, the tools 
that they needed to do the work that God had for them. What I have to tell you is the tools are given. The Spirit came to all believers, me, you, and all those people who believe in Christ so that we have the tools needed to go and do the work. And that work is to go and tell the nations, to tell people about Jesus Christ. And I don't mean that this is what you're, what you're going to do. You're not going to go out there and be like, you need to believe in Jesus and I'm going to keep telling you about it until you do it. That's, that's not what we're talking about. This is not a high pressure situation where we're trying to force Jesus down people's throats. But this is using those relationships that we are already in, that Jesus is already working in, to have and recognize the opportunities we have to share Christ with those people. Because all of those people need to hear Jesus. And if they know about Jesus, fantastic. We're glad that they're a part of the family. But if they don't, we want to welcome them. We want them to be a part of this family of Christ. And so as you're thinking about that, thinking about what it means to be an everyday missionary, I have some questions for you that I want you to think about throughout this next week, throughout the month, however long you need to consider these things. But one of the questions is, what is Jesus already up to? What is he already up to in your life? What is he doing with you? And what is he already up to maybe in some of the people that you know? That's one of the next question is, who around you is Jesus already working within? You know, maybe it's something that he, there's been some tragedy in their life and they're just lost and in need of comfort and a friend. Maybe it's the difficulty of COVID-19 affecting them in some ways and you're not sure what that's working with, but you see people in need of something. You know, the next question will be then, what are those people ready for? Because maybe it's a wonderful thing. Maybe they are ready to hear the gospel of Christ, to receive Jesus and believe in what he has done for them. But, and it's likely that it's not that easy. Now maybe what they're ready to hear, maybe what they need to know is they need to be given hope. They're struggling, they're having difficult times, and you say, hey, I, I see where you are. I understand what's going on, but I know that there's hope too. You know, maybe they're facing those challenges that we've been seeing more and more recently with protests and racism and stuff like that, and they just need someone to listen, someone to help them recognize the love of Christ in people or the love Christ has for people. That he wants all people to come and be saved and to love him with that wonderful work of forgiveness that he's done for us. And these are questions that I don't have the answers to. I, I can look in my own life and see those people that Christ is reaching there, but it's for you. Because as much as I work here, work at the church, teach Bible studies and do those things, I'm an everyday missionary too. And I look and see the people in my life, the people that God is working in, the people he is leading me to share with, to share the gospel with. And so that is the work for me and for all of us this week, to find those people, to see where Jesus is already moving so that we can join him on his mission to save all people. Because that's what we're here to do to share the love of Christ in thoughts, words, and actions. In his name, amen. So we're going to close today with a word of prayer. But like I said at the very beginning, if you have questions, if you want help, maybe you see ways that people are being affected by Christ, where Christ is moving in their lives, then let me know. Send me an email, you know, pastorjustin at stjohnsandweekcare.org. And I will do my best to, to, to help you. Because as much as I would love to do more work, uh, I think God has it prepared for you. And I can come and support you and encourage you as your pastor. And Pastor Fritch, I'm sure, would love to do the same in the work that God has given you. And so let's close this morning in a word of prayer. Great and gracious God, 
you have made us everyday missionaries. Whether we have recognized it before today or not, there is a lot of work to do. It's not this laborious, toilsome, difficult work, but it is the work of sharing your love with others. And with that work comes an amount of fear, of not knowing what to say correctly, of, of not knowing our Bible well enough, we think, or of just being the kind of person who is, is an introvert and prefers to stay by ourselves. But Lord God, in all of those situations, in all of the people that you have created, you have blessed them with, with tools and gifts and blessings to share with others. And so we pray that you would remind us of your constant presence with us, that this work is work done with you, not alone, not separate from others, but with you by our side, encouraging us, supporting us, giving us the words that we need when we need them. And we thank you for that opportunity, the opportunity to share with you, worship with you, and share the love of Christ with others. Because Christ has done that wonderful work of dying on the cross for our sins, offering us forgiveness and eternal life in you. So we take comfort in that life, that blessing that you have working with us, sending your spirit to guide us and be with us and strengthen us. And ask that those would go into the neighborhood with us. That as we live and dwell in our own neighborhoods, whether it be at home, at work, or at play, you would show us who there is working, or where you are working in those people. Because you are at work in this world. We thank you for the wonderful work you are doing. We pray that you would use us to be agents of your work, to work with you to bring about the salvation of the whole world. And so as you do your work, Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us. It's in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. We're going to continue this for the next couple weeks, and I hope you will join me then as well. Go in God's peace.